Tonight I'll invite Tanajananan to give um, a talk, give you some more teachings. This will be the last of the evening talks of this session of uh, teachings that we've had over the last couple of weeks. I'm very grateful for the teachings we've received from all the different visiting Ajans. Um, so as it is the last of the evening talks, uh, make your minds peaceful to receive the Dhamma so that you can take it away and contemplate it um, for the future. This evening I'd like to give my blessing to you all. You've all come to listen to the Dhamma. So please relax and if you wish you can practice meditation as I talk and as you listen. Establish mindfulness and try to make your mind peaceful. It might be the case that as you're listening you don't understand my words there in Thai or the sound itself is not clear or dis disappears from your consciousness. That doesn't matter, just relax and keep practicing mindfulness. If you wish you can follow the breath and don't concern yourself about the sound of my words if you don't understand the language. I wish to talk about the practice of Dhamma. When we do this, when we talk about the practice, the aim is to increase and develop uh, the understanding of the Dhamma and to gain more clarity on the way to practice. We have to do this because sometimes we have obstacles in our practice and which we need to clear up and we can do this through developing more understanding through listening to the Dhamma. Even if we have no particular obstacle or problem at the moment, listening to Dhamma can also be a great source of inner peace and happiness. As we listen, we can often get a lot of joy arising. So listening to the Dhamma is a very important part of the practice. It helps us to understand more clearly the path or the way to practice. Today we've all given up our time and energy to come out here to listen to the Dhamma, to join in to this, with this, evening, uh, this evening's program. Some people came this morning and went home again and have come back. Some people stayed all day. This is all because we have an interest to practice the Dhamma. Over the last few days I've already been giving you some teachings on the very beginnings of practice, the basic methods to make your mind peaceful. Uh, tonight I'll talk a little bit more or go a bit further with uh, the development of wisdom and the practice of contemplation to develop insight. How to develop what we call pavana maya panya, that is the wisdom that uh, comes from a still peaceful mind that allows us to uproot and abandon the, our attachments and mental defilements. When we practice, in the beginning we need a firm belief and confidence both in the teacher and the way of practice. So we have our teachers, say of the modern era, Lumpur Man, Lumpur Cha, we put our faith in them and the method of practice that they've left us. The next thing we need is effort and energy. We need to put effort into developing the path, particularly to develop the quality of sati, mindfulness, and to develop samadhi from that. We also need to put effort into training ourselves in contemplation of the Dhamma, using our mindfulness to contemplate this body, contemplate the 32 parts of the body, to contemplate, to see the body as the four elements of earth, air, fire and water. It takes effort to keep mindfulness there within the body. You can do this in different situations. For instance, you might have been sitting in a car coming here today. 
if you're a passenger, you might just take that time, that opportunity to quietly contemplate your own body in this way, to run through the 32 parts, to note them, visualize them, reflect on them. If you're the driver of the car, it might be more difficult to do this. So you might just put on a Dhamma talk on a, a CD or a tape and just listen to that. And you can still gain some benefit as you drive along. The aim of our practice is to develop a sense of continuity. Ideally, you, you're aiming to do practice from morning through to the end of the evening when you go to bed. That's the best way if you want to actually see some results and progress in your practice. Of course, when we begin the practice, we have a lot of confusion, mental agitation. There's a lot of doubt and uncertainty about the way to proceed. We all want to have a peaceful mind, but how can we achieve it? What method can we use? We have to learn the method and the way to develop the highest peace and the purity of mind that is free from kilesa, the mental defilements. The very beginning of this method or this way is the practice of dana, generosity, learning to share and to give up, particularly your material things, learning to share and give up material things to get, go against the tendency towards greed and attachment. We also have to learn to follow the five precepts, establish those five precepts in our heart as our, our regular standard of behavior. And even on some occasions we might determine to keep the eight precepts. When we determine for ourselves to keep the precepts, we call this samatana virat. It means just mentally making that determination to follow the precepts and cut off those unwholesome tendencies in our behavior that lead us to break the precepts. We can do this for ourselves. We're just quietly resolved to keep the precepts, maybe sitting in front of a Buddha or a picture of the Buddha or a Buddha statue. This is one way we can achieve a certain level of purity by letting go of kalesas on this level. However, it might be the case that we still have inside our minds some mental proliferation and unwholesome and agitated states of mind. The mind will sometimes be in an unwholesome state, sometimes in a wholesome state. The reason we still fall into unwholesome states of mind is because deep down in the mind there's still some wrong views there, fueled by delusion. The heart of our practice then is learning to abandon these unwholesome states of mind and prevent them from arising again and to bring up and establish wholesome states of mind and develop them. For instance, we might um, be bothered by angry states of mind, different kinds of negative thoughts. So we have to learn to find skillful ways to abandon them. We have to learn how to bring up thoughts of kindness and compassion and we can do this through regularly meditating on that theme, the theme of loving kindness and compassion. It's natural that every day we will experience some tiredness, even some stress from our work and our daily lives. I used to be just the same before I was a monk. I had a job and I wanted to practice, but I found it very tiring. In the morning I would try to practice some anapanasati, mindfulness of breathing, before I left the house. I would try and find some more time during my lunch break from work, maybe to sit in a quiet place and for 15-20 minutes I would practice anapanasati. Then again when I came home late at night I would do some more. In this way I found that even though it was tiring and hard, hard work, I could maintain a better level of mindfulness than how I had previously before I started practicing. With this level of mindfulness I found that I had a more lightness of body and mind and that gave me a lot of encouragement to keep practicing. I also used to use the five precepts as regular guidelines for my behavior and then of course 
I had to rely on a lot of patience and endurance in this practice as well. When the mind did become peaceful, I always turned to contemplate the body. First of all, just using memory and thought, thinking about it, memorizing uh, the different parts of the body and thinking about how they are impermanent, unsatisfactory, and ultimately they're not self, they're beyond our control and they don't really have an owner. Once we determine to practice the Dhamma and we're really sincere in our commitment, then we can really experience the results of the practice. The way that the Buddha taught, we call the Eightfold Noble Path. We can summarize those eight factors of the path as sila, samadhi and panya. And this is the uh, foremost way to enlightenment, it's the leading way. The Lord Buddha was the one who met with this way through his own efforts towards the end of suffering. So we should all contemplate and reflect on the fact of our own good fortune, the fact that we've been able to come into contact with the teachings of the Lord Buddha and hear this way that leads to the end of suffering so that we can follow for ourselves. Right here in Melbourne we have the chance to practice the Buddhist teachings and follow them. We have this monastery, Buddha Bodhiwana Monastery, with Venerable Ajahn Kalyana as the teacher. This is our great good fortune that we have a place to come and practice and hear the teachings. What we should do now is determine to use our time, to use this very life for furthering our practice and for developing ourselves. We can do this every day. Because time is passing us by every day, we're getting closer to our our death and the end of our life every day. We can't be sure that when we do die, what will happen to our minds? Where will they go? What will happen next? So now that we have met with the teachings of the Lord Buddha, we should determine to practice accordingly and be aiming to develop good karma that will bring us Um, the development, the happiness and the understanding that we wish. We should aim to develop the practice of dana and the practice of sila. We should be helping our families and society to develop the wholesome uh, dhammas and to follow our duties to family and society correctly. We should make the effort to listen to the dhamma regularly and the effort to develop ourselves through the practice of meditation. We should put effort into developing mindfulness, that firmness of mind that comes with the practice of mindfulness, and the peace of samadhi. Even if it's difficult, we have to keep trying, because this is our chance, this is our opportunity, now that we have met with the Buddha's teachings. The Buddha said, one who sees the Buddha sees the Dhamma, One who sees the Dhamma sees the Buddha. So we shouldn't think that the Dhamma is something far away or (coughs) uh, related to a certain place or country. We live here in Australia, but if we can practice to see the Dhamma here, then we can see the Buddha here. If we can make the mind peaceful and contemplate the Dhamma and develop insights, into the true nature of phenomena, to see the anicca, dukkha, anatta of phenomena, then this is as if we see the Lord Buddha. When we see the Dhamma or have insight into the Dhamma, then we'll see the Buddha. When we have insight into this truth, this is what will remove doubts and uncertainty about everything from the mind. Insight is that which clears away doubt. We can keep practicing, whatever our backgrounds, wherever we're from, whatever country, doesn't matter. The important thing is to follow the Eightfold Path as the Buddha laid down, uh, aiming to realize the Four Noble Truths. We begin with the practice of learning to calm the mind, samatha, bhavana, 
make the mind very still and calm through the practice of mindfulness on a meditation object. From this, and that using this as a foundation, we train ourselves in wisdom, learning to investigate the truth of this body, to see the body as something that is made up of the four elements, and to see that the true nature of this body is that it's impermanent, it's changeable, it's constantly moving towards its end, towards death and degeneration. And that ultimately it's without an owner. We can't control it or make it do what we want. So it's, there's no real owner in this body. The Buddha said we must contemplate to get to the point where we can see this body is just a body. It's not a person, a being, us or them, me or mine. Of course, in the beginning, we tend to attach to this body as ours. We take ownership of it. But as we develop our mindfulness and learn to contemplate to see the truth, then we go beyond that delusion. and We can see the truth of impermanence, unsatisfactoriness, and the lack of self in this body. So please keep resolving to practice on a regular basis. The Dhamma that we practice is like food or nourishment for the heart, both nourishes and bathes the heart. In Australia here it's a very wealthy, stable country and there's plenty of physical food available, the food is very good here. But what we need more of is food for the heart that comes through the Dhamma practice. It's this practice that is aiming towards liberation of our hearts from the causes of suffering. Just as the Lord Buddha showed us over 2,500 years ago. But this Dhamma is still valuable and relevant to to today, to us today. Don't doubt about it, that it is the way to liberation. We have living proof in the modern masters, Lumpo Man, Lumpo Cha, who showed that this path really does lead to enlightenment and the end of suffering. It'll be out of the peaceful mind that we develop through the practice that we're able to see through our normal delusions and attachments to conventional reality, what we call samuti, satcha, the apparent or conventional reality. It's only through the development of wisdom and investigating truth that we can penetrate through this to what we call vimuti, the liberation of heart. Liberation comes with the ending of fear, greed and anger. Normally we're caught into the conventional reality, it deludes us and we have this sense of self and ownership of our experience. This sense of self and the delusion feeds all the different moods and mental states of suffering that we have, coming from greed, anger and delusion. But as we practice, we're learning to let go of these. We're learning to let go of upadana, attachment, let go of desire, dhanha. These are the causes of suffering, these are the things we have to abandon if we want to free ourselves from suffering. If the mind is free of upadana and tanha, or craving and attachment, then suffering cannot arise. The way to free the mind from these things, these attachments and craving, is through the practice of sila, samadhi and panya. This is the way that leads to letting go. It's the way to letting go and overcoming ignorance. Little by little the mind becomes purer through this practice. We have the Lord Buddha, the Dhamma, the Sangha as our refuge and he's given us this way to follow, the way of practice. So we must make our mind very firm, make our faith and confidence in this path very firm. The most firm kind of faith we call achara sata. This is the kind of faith that's unshakable. Whatever happens in our lives to the world around us, our faith in Buddha, Dhamma, Sangha cannot be shaken or changed. The Lord Buddha taught this way out of suffering and it's something that if we can experience for ourselves it's like a miracle, the miracle of the mind, the miracle of the peaceful mind and the happy mind. So please determine to put as much effort as you can into this practice of Dhamma and this will allow you to see the Buddha. 
อันตมยังวาดกถาสาธุคารังดธรรมเสีสาธุสาธุสาธุอนุโมดาม